And now to chapter 21, the wonderful world of amines. As with chapter 20, this chapter introduces numerous reactions that have already been covered previously in our text. In fact, there isn't a single reaction in this chapter that you haven't already seen before. So I, why am I wasting your time with it? Because repetition increases retention, focus improves depth, and amines are super duper important. During my first semester of graduate school many years ago, I had a beautiful and demoralizing experience with the means. What was that experience? Well, it was my very first cumulative exam, one of the first hurdles chemistry grad students have to traverse before receiving their PhDs. This particular exam had numerous questions about a means. Here are a few examples which you're welcome to look over and attempt later on for fun if you want. My first examining professor asked us to write out arrow pushing mechanisms for each of these reactions. In other words, this starting material is somehow converted into this product. And this starting material is somehow converted into this, into this product. Please draw the arrow pushing mechanism that shows how that is. Now as you look at these reactions, I hope it makes you think a little bit better about me, your professor. I do not ask you guys questions that are this mean. With my age and experience now, I could do these in my sleep, but back then I felt like a gerbil trying to perform brain surgery with a putty knife. For whatever reason, I found this question here to be particularly daunting. Once again, the examining professor asked us to provide an arrow pushing mechanism for the conversion of this starting material into this product. As with the previous examples, I was completely clueless. The professor then asked a follow-up question. Please identify the structure of byproduct X. For my first cumulative exam, I wanted to include at least one answer that wasn't completely ridiculous. One sign to my professor that I was an intelligent and redeemable grad student. What answer did I put to this question? This was my answer. I wrote down, it's a monkey, and I drew a picture of this monkey. Yeah, as you probably guessed, I failed that cumulative exam really hard. And while I didn't receive any credit for the answer, I could go home happy knowing that I had at least written down something that I thought was funny. Now, after studying this chapter, you should be able to provide IUPAC names for simple amines, be familiar with some pKa values of simple amines, know the amine reactions covered in this chapter, and be familiar with the heterocycles featured in sections 21.5 and 21.6, and with how they react, and then be able to apply this knowledge to total synthesis. We'll also cover some biologically relevant amines addressed in section 21.7. Let's begin by addressing the systematic naming of amines, with which you already have some familiarity. Amines, as you know, can either be primary, secondary, or tertiary, depending on how many carbons are bonded to the nitrogen. Thus, we could say that methylamine, where nitrogen is stuck to one carbon, is primary. Dipropylamine, this example, has a nitrogen stuck to two carbons, so it's secondary. Triethylamine has a nitrogen stuck to three carbons, so it's tertiary. Ammonia is the only example where you have a nitrogen that's not stuck to any carbons. When four carbons are bonded to the nitrogen, the nitrogen gets a positive charge. It's important to remember that that nitrogen still has a full octet. It only has a positive charge because it's sharing more electrons than a nitrogen typically likes to. When you have a positively charged nitrogen, that is a nitrogen that has four bonds, that compound is called a quaternary ammonium salt. Primary amines that have this generic formula are named by adding the suffix amine to the name of the organic substituent. Thus, for this example, we have a tert butyl group. I could call this primary amine tert butyl amine. Here I have a cyclohexane, but I have an amine coming off of it, so I could call it cyclohexyl amine. You could also call it cyclohexanamine. This example right here has two amines, so it's a diamine stuck to a butane, so I call it butane 1,4-diamine. The numbers are added to indicate which positions the nitrogens are stuck to. Symmetrical and secondary amines are named by adding di or tri to the alkyl group. Thus, if I've got a nitrogen stuck to two ethyl groups, for example, I would call it diethylamine. 
a nitrogen stuck to three ethyl groups would be called triethylamine. Asymmetric amines are named as N-substituted primary amines with the largest alkyl group being considered the parent chain. So let's look at this example here. The longest alkyl group that includes the nitrogen is this propyl group. If this nitrogen were not stuck to these two methyl groups, then the name of this compound would be called propylamine. So that is the parent group. Because this nitrogen is stuck to two alkyl groups, we call it N comma N dimethyl propylamine. The two Ns indicate that, the nit that these two methyls are stuck to the nitrogen. In this example at right, you can see that the longest chain is the cyclohexylamine. So that is the parent chain. And then you'll see that this nitrogen is stuck to a methyl and to an ethyl. We put those in the name alphabetically. So I thus name it by saying N-ethyl, N-methyl, cyclohexylamine. I'll now introduce you to the general amine pKa values by asking the following question. Which proton do you think would be more acidic, or that is, easier to remove, between compounds A and B? So I've got compound A that's completely neutral, and compound B where my nitrogen has been protonated uh, with one extra proton, so it's got a positive charge. Which of these two protons would you think would be more reactive or more acidic? Once you come up with your answer to that question, I want you to answer the question, why? If you wish, you can pause the video right now to answer this question for yourself before moving forward. Now, as you may have already surmised, the hydrogens on the protonated nitrogen in this ammonium salt are much more acidic than the hydrogens on the neutral nitrogen in the amine to the left. We therefore see the corresponding pKa's. The pKa of a regular primary amine is 40. And the pKa of an ammonium salt is 10. Remember that the lower the pKa, the more acidic the hydrogen. Thus, ammonium salts have more acidic hydrogens than typical primary amines. Let's examine the effect of electronegative withdrawal on amine pKa values. Can you answer me this? Which of these two compounds, or these three compounds, which be, would be the most acidic? and which would be the least? Now I'm going to answer this question. As you may have guessed, the least acidic one is this primary amine that is neutral. The most acidic ones are obviously going to be the nitrogens that are excessively protonated, making those hydrogens more easy to remove by a base. So the least acidic one is this methylamine. Now we have to look at these two acidic ammonium <coughs> salts and ask ourselves, which of these kinds of protons, the one on the left or the one on the, in the middle, are going to be easier to remove? As you might have guessed, when you have a nitrogen stuck to a benzene ring, a benzene ring is much more electronegative because you have an aromatic system of all sp2 hybridized carbons. Remember, you have more s character in an sp2 hybridized carbon, hence it's more electronegative. This benzene ring is much more electronegative than just this typical sp3 hybridized carbon uh, on this alkyl chain. So if I've got a benzene ring that's sucking electron density away from this nitrogen, it is going to make these hydrogens <laughs> much more acidic than the hydrogens that are stuck on this nitrogen on the primary ammonium group. Let's take a look at the pKa's to check this out. Thus I see that the least acidic compound of these three, once again, is the primary amine to the right because it's neutral. The most acidic with the lowest pKa is this anilinium ion here, the benzene ring stuck to an ammonium salt. And then the one that's right in the middle is this primary ammonium ion.